أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا العلم النافع وارزقنا العمل الصالح إنك على كل شيء قدير Of course, when you start a lesson, it's important to begin with the Bismillah, name of Allah, and the Salat ala Rasul, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah um, in what you say and what you do. طيب, last class, we covered some topics, and I think it was a little confusing, so let's do a rerun and, and, and try it again. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is the science of Nahu. The Arabic language has various sciences. There's the science of Nahu, which is what we're um, talking about today. There's a science of Sarf, which is morphology, or the um, the way to the words are derived from each other. There's a science of Balagha, which has to do with eloquence and how a person uses sentences in order to get his point across. There's a science of um, Pradat or vocabulary. Um, there's a science of Mantaq, which is logic. And there's a science of Nahu. Nahu helps one understand the the meaning intended by the the sentences or the words that, that are are being written or said. Um, Nahu is alive, or it 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 shows us how the Arabic language is alive. So in Nahu, you study the reason why you say Alhamdulillahi as opposed to Alhamdulillaha, as opposed to Alhamdulillahu. The reason you say Alhamdu as opposed to Alhamdi, as opposed to Alhamda. The reason you say Rabbil Alameena as opposed to Rabbil Alamuna. The difference between between Qul and Qulu and Qula and Quli. This is all studied in Nahu. Okay. So um, the word Nahu linguistically means resemblance or it has two meanings resemblance resemblance is it with an e or an, or an a resemblance or direction okay it has more than two meanings but these are two of them resemblance or direction Resemblance would be like Muhammadun Nahu Aliyin. Muhammadun Nahu Aliyin. Direction, you would say the Habtu Nahwa Al Masjidi. You can write that or not write that, it's fine. So the word Nahu linguistically can mean resemblance, it can mean direction. Resemblance, Muhammadun Nahu Ali. So Muhammadun Nahu Ali means Muhammad resembles Ali. Dhahabtu or direction. Dhahabtu Nahu al Masjidi. I went in the direction of the masjid.
Okay. What is Nahu when we're talking about the science? It is the science of the condition of the word endings. Word endings is an important part because Nahu studies the endings of the word, not the beginning of the word, not the middle of the word, the ending of the word. That's what concerns the science of Nahu. Whether um, it is in the state of I'rab, Bina, or what follows. Whether it is in the state of I'rab, Bina, or what follows. I should have put or there, but I forgot to put or. So you guys can put or. What is Bina? We'll get to there, inshallah. We'll get to it. Hopefully, we'll discuss it today. Ta'rab, Bina, and what follows. Okay. So, when I say Hada, I have to erase this and write it again. Hada. Oh, tough. Hada. Matubahun. So what concerns us is the ending of the word. So the ending of this word, hadha, is what? What's the ending of hadha? Alif. 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 So that would be the concern of Nahu, that Alif. What's the ending of Matbakh? Yeah. Kha yeah. is the ending of Matbakh. So that's what Nahu concerns. What's con what what is concerning to Nahu is the ending of the word. So the ending of the word, Kha, what vowel does it have? Bamatain. Bamatain. So when we're talking about Nahu, the Tanween at this juncture in time doesn't concern us. It's a Dhamma. Why does it have two dhammas? That's a different issue entirely. So it has a dhamma. Okay? Clear? So the ending of the word is what concerns us. Hadha matbakhun. What does the ending of the word have? Dhamma. Dhamma. Okay? The ending of the word changed. So, Ra'aytu, what part of Ra'aytu is concerning? To Nahu. <laughs> The ta and also the ya, because the oh, they come together. The ya yeah. is the end of ra'a, and the ta is a pronoun. Mm. That's another word. So the ya, the ta, and what else? Mm. What else is concerning to Nahu? The Dhamma. The Kha. Oh, for Matbakh, okay. Oh, the Dhamma. Oh, okay. Right? The Kha is what's concerning to Nahu. The same way this, this Kha is a concern of Nahu, 
This kha is concerned of Nahu. Why didn't I say the alif is uh, is important in Nahu? It's like a med, is it? No, it's not a med. Because the alif has to do with morphology, sarf. The alif is there for spelling purposes. It doesn't mean anything. It's not part of the word. Sure. Can you can you write the met bachad like in a little clear at the 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 ha? How do you how you'd write it like you know in a more classical kind of? You trying you, to tell you me you me I got bad handwriting, brother? No, you. I think you write just like how an Arab would write, like if you're writing letters or something, right? But the way to learn it, you know. Okay, that's clear. Zakalakhir. I mean, well, yeah. You just you just trying to tell me I got bad handwriting, Akhi. No, that one is much better. Trying to be nice about it. That one is much better, mashallah. See, I have support, Akhi. So don't. Matubakhan. So what's concerning for Nahu is the ending of the word, the ya, ta, and the kha. What vowel is on the kha? Ten, it's, uh, fatha. So the fathatain part, it's not concerning to me right now. All I know is there's a fatha. The second one has nothing to do with Nahu. Only the first one. There's a fatha. Ra'aytu matbakhan. Hada. Min. So what's concerning to us in Nahu? Oh. The Alif. What else? Noon. Noon. What else? Ha. 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 Remember, the science of the condition of the endings of the, of the word endings. So the condition of the word ending, that's all that concerns me in Nahu. Why is the, why is the Elif like Hada? Like if you had the, why do you need the Elif there? And if you have which word, Hada? Yeah. Why do you Let's need the alif there if, if you say Hada and you have the, the Fatha there, it means the, the A, eh, vowel, Hada, why do you need to put the Fatha there? Tell me, why is there a GH instead of an F? I don't know. Exactly. Oh, well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for uh, for this, because it's not Hada. That it's the in the Quran, you'll see after the ha, there's an alif like that. Hmm. Ha because it's a med, it's long elongated. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, got it. All right, so I just the point of this section is for us to understand Nahu. That Nahu concerns the ending of the word. Now the ending of the word is either going to have the condition of I'rab, Bina, 
or what follows. Let me go ahead and write that. Arab. Bina. Good to go. All right. So now we know Nahu. Now let's find out what Arab is. Al Arab. That's the linguistic meaning. So al Arab, what is al Arab? To change the word endings based on what causes the change. This change is either verbal or intended. Okay, you get you gave us actually you translated the meaning from Arabic last time also. So that again? The, uh, you changed. Uh, you, I mean, you gave us actually. You said it was a last the way you described last time. Also, was you said was the translation of the Arabic meaning to change the state to change the state of the word endings. So is that what they call case, right? The case that do you know? Is that okay? I'm to change sure. the state of the word endings based on their placement in a verbal structure. Yeah. yeah. We can use that. And this, add to that, this change is either verbal or intended. Okay. This change.
three exam or yeah, any three sentences. You got that? So Fata means young boy or a young man. So the intent is for you guys to get a feeling of um, the concept of word endings. Word endings change when the meaning changes. All right, so let's go back. So the placement of matbakh here is a placement that requires a dhamma. The placement of matbakh here is a placement that requires a fatha. Or any of its substitutes, a dhamma or any of its substitutes, a fatha or any of its substitutes. And the placement of matbakh here is a placement of kasra or any of its substitutes. Okay. You can see here that matbakh, the ending of matbakh has changed from sentence to sentence. Correct? Yeah, sure. Just a quick question. When you say, for instance, kasra or any of its substitutes, do you mean that tenween is a substitute? Okay. Tanween is a kasra. We don't say tanween, we say kasra. Okay. Then we say, what kind of tanween is it? Hmm. Okay. Tanween, it doesn't have to do with the Arab. We say, what kind of tanween is it? Hmm. Okay. So we say it's a kasra. Okay. Five. But you see the word matbakh changed. Sometimes it has a dhamma, sometimes it has a fatha, sometimes it has a kasra. You can see that, right? Yes. So the changing from a dhamma to a fatha to a kasra, this is i'rab. The science of why is nahu. All right, so let me ask you guys. When we say i'rab is to change the ending or the word endings, what is the opposite of changing the word endings? Remains the same. Not changing. Right, exactly. So the opposite of changing something is to keep it the same. That's more full. So the opposite of i'rab is bina. These two mm -hmm. are opposites. They're opposites. So if Arab is changing the word endings, Bina is what? Not changing. Keeping it the same. 
So examples of bina is the dhamma on the ta. Other example, right? Right, the dhamma on the ta, that always stays the same. Another example of bina is that sukun on the noon in min. It always stays the same. Another example is the alif on hadha. It always stays the same. These are all examples of bina. That's not what marfu means, is it? Like uh... marfu is a category of i'rab. Okay. But I'm not getting into that today. Okay. A uh, question. Yeah. So the the ra'ay to uh, why is that stay the same all the time? Uh, say so that dhamma. again. The dhamma, the, the ra'ay to. Yeah. You said that stays the same always. It always stays the same. Okay, so it's number ra'ay to. That's a different word. Okay. So the word is right. Ra'ay to I saw. Ra'ay to is for first person. Ra'ayta is for second person, and that stays the same. Uh, yeah, second person, it stays the same. Oh, you meant for the first person, it doesn't, it stays the same. It's okay. a different word. It's a different word, yeah. It's not the same word. But matbakh is the same word. Matbakh, matbakh, matbakh. That's the same exact word. But it changes. It, the ending changes. The ending changes, okay. Is it has to do with the the ism or why why the one changes one one is the fa'al or so it has to do with what why why would it, one change and one the other one doesn't change because the other one is noun or ism so they say uh so they say the reason why Okay, so I'll I'll give an explanation and I won't dwell too much on it. Those who get it, get it. Those who don't, we'll, we'll cover it later, inshallah. So al-ism, the origin is that um, al-ism is mu'arab. You can do an i'rab on ism. That's the origin. Harf and fi'l, the origin is that they're mabni. They don't change. Okay. Okay. You'll find an ism have bina, be mabni. If it resembles a harf. Okay. You'll find an ism be mabni if it resembles a harf. You'll find a fi'l be mu'rab if it resembles an ism. Okay. And I'll I'll end with that. Okay. The resemblance is either in how it's put, it's, or it's in its meaning. Yani. Okay. But, just for now, you just want us. We now we just understand it, that it doesn't change. And right. Then the some words changes. Okay. Change the endings of it. Change some words. The endings of it. Uh, of the their endings stay the same. Okay. Changing is called i'rab. Staying the same is called bina. And bina literally means to build. Bina means to build. So it's built that way. It doesn't change. It's built. Okay, one last thing that I wanted to point out, because remember we said, I'rab is either verbal or intended. 
So here, هذا مطبخون, you can see the ضمة. Right? Can you see the ضمة or no? Yeah. Yes. Matbakhan, you can see the fatha, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Matbakhin, you can see the kasra, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is verbal. This is a verbal change. This is the verbal the change if you can see the change. Or you can hear the change. You say verbal because you can hear it. Right? It's called verbal or verbal change if you can hear it. But in this example, fata, 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 it's the same. Fata is the same as this fata, is the same as this fata. Right? Yes or no? You guys with me or not? Yes. yes. Right. Hada matbakhun, the same. Hada fata. Hada hada, same sentence. But I replaced matbakh with fata. Ra'aytu matbakhan, ra'aytu fata. I just replaced matbakh with fata. Hada min matbakhin, hada min fata. I just replaced matbakh with fata. So, if it's going to be in the same sentence, the same meaning, the same placement, it should have the same i'rab. Same placement, same i'rab. Same placement, same i'rab. But we don't see a fatha, a dhamma, we don't see a fatha, we don't see a qasam. So the change here is intended. It's not verbal. Can you see a fatha here? Can you see a dhamma? Abu Muhammad? Abu Muhammad, can you see a dhamma on the alif? Yes. Uh, no. No, you can't see it. Is it the same sentence as the prior one? Similar. No. It's the same. The only difference is just you, you changed the word from matbakh to fatha. Mubtada is the same. Same mubtada. Right? Right. So if it has the same mubtada, then it's going to have the same i'rab. Mm -hmm. Right? Same as Texas, right? This is house. This is kitchen. This is phone. Same. This boy, this house, this phone, this hulu, same. So why isn't there a dhamma? How are you going to pronounce a dhamma? You're going to say fata. Go ahead, pronounce a dhamma on the on the alif. Let me hear you try it. <laughs> right, exactly. That's, that, that's why the arrows are like. We're just going to leave it without a dhamma. We're just going to know it's supposed to be a dhamma there. We know there's supposed to be one there, but we don't say it. <laughs> Same thing like Musa or Isa. Same. Musa, Isa, Fata, Raha, Asa. Same. So the I'rab here is intended and not verbal. The status is sending. Would you say Mustafa is Rahman? The status is sending every one of them, but it's not. Uh, you don't see it. It's there, but you don't see it. It's intended. It's in the niya. <laughs> yeah, the right intention. That's oh, like oh, having oh. the having the intention to catch the jama'ah at the masjid, but because you got there too late. You know, you missed it, but hopefully you have the you have the ajr because you had the right intention. 
So there's no Dhamma, but you know it's there because it's supposed to be there. Where, so where is it supposed to be? On the end. Remember, we're talking about the end. Where it yeah. ends. Okay. So do you mean that it means the same thing? That's all? It just You don't have to say it, but it's there. I mean, you already said that, but I mean, like, this means boy. Fatah means boy. Right. right. Normally, if it didn't have the Aleph behind it, it would be able to have the the Dhamma? I mean, the the uh, the, the vowel? If it was a different letter at the end, so say, yeah. for example, um, I don't know. Um, yeah, let's use this word. You would say fatratun. Because, because the yaas is, is gone. I mean, you can see a dhamma. You can hear a dhamma on, ta, on the ta. Because the ya is gone? Well, I'm not really getting into why, because oh. that's a different conversation. Okay. I'm just, I just want you all to recognize that if you don't see the dhamma and it's in a place where there should be a dhamma, that means that it has a dhamma, but you just can't see it. Okay. It's intended. That's the point of this whole exercise. Not why there's no dhamma, but if you see a word like this in a sentence where there should be a dhamma at the end, or there should be a kasra at the end, or there should be a fatha at the end, but you don't see it, you don't hear it, you know that it's there, but it's intended. So is there any clue what kind of, uh, you know, uh, ending of the word, like, or the starting of the word? Uh, right now, the ending of the word is yeah, right? I just, so, I just, I'm trying, right. I'm trying, I'm trying not to give you guys too much. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, sir. So we'll we'll get there. We'll get there, inshallah. I just want you all to understand the concept of nahu, the concept of i'rab, the concept of bina. These three things I want I want to make sure you guys get it. Okay. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ In another ayah, مِنْ أَحَدٍ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا It's the same word. That word, that vocabulary item, أَحَد has not changed. What has changed, however, is its placement in a sentence. So because its placement in a sentence changed, the ending of the word also changed. Now that change is sometimes verbal and sometimes intended. So if you see a word put in a sentence where there should be a bumma at the end, but there isn't, you know that the bumma is intended. Is that, is that? So we call those odd, we call those odd mabni, something like that. I'm sorry, what? We call them mabni, those odds that does not change. Say that They're, one more time. We, we call them mabni, those odds that are, that are not changing. You didn't get it? So I'm saying fata, fata is not changing. We so said the bomma. The dhamma on the ta, the ta is mabni because that dhamma does not change. Oh. So there's the mabni are specific words. It's not just every one that doesn't change. No, that there's there are rules to that. You know the words, which words don't change. And there's rules to knowing which word, 
you don't see a dhamma on, you don't see a fatah, you don't see a kasr on. There's rules to that. Again, what we're trying to get today is the concept of i'rab and nahu and bina. The concept. What does it mean? Okay. Why is the ending changing? When does it change? Okay. Recognize that it's the same word. It's just in a different placement in the sentence. This is what we're trying to grasp today. All right? Okay. Is there a thing, anything that isn't clear? Ahmed Mizyad. <laughs> it's kind I'm of... messing with you, I know. <laughs> Talk to me. I mean, I, I, I understand. Okay. Like, I mean, don't yeah. get caught up. Yeah, I'm trying not to get too into yeah, it. Don't understand what you're saying and understand the, the, the differences and why that happens and just leave it at yeah, that. It'll connect. It'll come together. I think so. But just stay with me where I am right now. Okay? Recognize yeah. that the words do change, but not all words change. It change. Um, some of them, there should be a dhamma, but there isn't. It's intended. Catch that. All right. So let's move on to the lesson and see some examples of what we're talking about. All right. Al-Baytu fil Bayti. What the page number word. are we on? Sure. I'm sorry, what? What page number are we on? Uh, 20. 21. 21. Thank you. Al-Baytu, at the end, there's a Dhamma. You guys see that, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fil Bayti, at the end, there's a Kasra. Yes. Right? Right. Okay. So I'm going to ask you guys, why is there a Kasra at the end of Fil Bayti? Because of its position. There is a fee. Because of her Pazar fee before it. So the only difference between this word and this word is that this word has fi before it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, and I'm deducing here, the reason why this one has a kasra is because of this word that came before it. Fil bayti. So I think that I can safely say that what kind of word is al bayt? Is it ism, fi'al, or harf? Ism. So I can safely say that anytime there is fi followed by ism, that ism is going to take a kasra or what substitutes it. Again, I can safely say that any time the word fi, the harf fi, comes before an ism, that ism will have a kasra at the end or one of its substitutes. Should I write that down? Anytime. What are the substitutes you're saying, Sheikh? One of the substitutes. Now, I keep saying one of the substitutes is because I want that to be ingrained in your mind. That Kasara does have substitutes. Dhamma has substitutes. Fatsha has substitutes. But I don't want to tell you what those substitutes are oh, just yet. Got it. Got it. 
Using the excitement level now. Another thing, another thing that I can deduce as well, and based on other knowledge, is that um, phi can only be before a ism, not a harf or fi'l. All right. Okay. Al baytu fil bayti. Hold on. Huh? Hold on one second. Yeah. So I guess I'm just not understanding then what is harf because my understanding of harf is a word that needs another to be understood. True. That, that does fail. True. Now, the reason why we, we, we categorized harf like that, or we, we um, defined harf in that manner, is because the concept of harf is different from a particle in English. So, like, for the, uh, for example, fi, it means in, right? Yeah? Yeah. Right, right, right. But sometimes it means because. The only way for me to determine whether it means in or because is the word that comes after it. Okay. So the meaning of fee cannot be determined unless you put it in a sentence. Same with ala, same with the other huruf. Does that make sense now? Mm -hmm. Ahmad Mizyad. So, 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 give me an example of where you can't put fee before. No, 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 no. Fee can only be before an ism. Right. So, just say, yeah, just, just do something wrong and put fee before a harf or something or. Ah, uh, hada fi yalab. So yalab is to is to play or playing. Yeah. Can you say this is in playing? No. Maybe. Al masjidu fil masjidi. Same. Al maktabu al al maktabi. Al al maktabi is the same as fee. Same as fee because it does the same work. Same result. What's the result? Kesra at the end of the word. Booyah. So if the fee did it and the ala did it, they must do the same work.
السرير على السرير there it goes again doing the same work okay One last thing we can learn is that the presence of harf jar is a right determines that the word after it is an ism. Because remember, we said fi can only be before an ism. So if it can only be before an ism, this should mean that if you see fi before a word, that that word is an ism. And that applies to fee, and that applies to ala, and all of the other harf jar. We'll get to them, inshallah. So the lesson here is that fee and ala do something to a noun. What they do to a noun is they cause that noun to have a kasra. Do, they do something to an ism. And what they do is they cause the end of that ism to have a kasra or one of its substitutes. Aina Muhammadun. Aina Khabar Muhammadun Mubtada. Huwa fil Gurfati. Why did I say Gurfati and not Gurfatu? Because of fee. Because of fee. Because of fee. Right. Where's the Mubtada in this sentence? Huwa. Huwa. Huwa is a third person singular masculine pronoun. Huwa fil So if huwa is the mubtada, where's the khabar? Sorry. Fil ghurfati. is the news. That's the khabar. Huwa mubtada fil ghurfati khabar. Wa ayna yasirun? Which one is mubtada? Which one is khabar? Yasirun is Muptada. Yasirun Muptada. Aina Khabar. Huwa fil Hammami. Why did I say Al Hammami instead of Hammamu, Hammama? Why? Because of fee. Half Ujar. Huwa fil Hammami. Where's the Muptada? Huwa. Huwa. Khabar. <laughs> Ahmad Mizid, are you following? I don't want to lose you, bro. I'm following. But oh. The first example, huwa, yeah. did they just forget to put the kasra? Uh, they're trying to trick you, bro. Just so you know. So yeah, you know. exactly. Wa aina aminatu Which one is a move to that? Which one is khabar? Amina to Mubtada. Amina. Amina to Mubtada. Wa aina khabar. Khabar. Hiya fil matbakhi. Which one is Mubtada? Which one is khabar? He is Mubtada. Hiya Mubtada fil matbakhi khabar. Limada al matbakhi. 
because of the harf al-jar fi. The wujud of harf al-jar. Mumtaz. Aina al-kitabu? Aina al-mubtada? Aina al-khabar? Aina al-khabar. Aina al-khabar? Al-kitabu? Mubtada. Mubtada. Huwa ala al-maktabi? Aina al-mubtada? Huwa. 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 Mubtada. Wa al-khabar? Ala al-maktabi? Ala al-maktabi. لماذا المكتبي؟ Because of the على حرف الجر على. وأين الساعة؟ وأين خبر؟ أين خبر؟ الساعة مبتدأ. مبتدأ. هي على السرير. أين المبتدأ؟ هي مبتدأ. هي على السرير. خبر. خبر. لماذا السرير؟ حرف الجر على. Okay, so I want you guys to notice that Aina always had a fatha at the end. You guys notice that? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? It's Bina. Mabni. So something that has the condition of Bina is called Mabni. 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 Mi ba nun ya. Mabni. Mabni yun. Mabni yun. Okay. Mabni yun. The condition of bina, right? Right. Aina stays the same. Aina, 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 aina. It's the same exact. What about huwa? Why does that keep a fatha? Why is also mabni? Also mabni. Huwa, 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 huwa. Mabni. Mab, Mabni. Mab, Mabni. What about fee? Fee, 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 fee. Ala, 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 ala. Sorry. Mabni. Mabni. Mabni is the, the ba has a sukun on it or fatta? Sukun. Mabni, it's, right? It stays the same. No, no, I mean, I'm sorry. The me, I'm spelling it Mabni. That's a sukun on the ba? Yeah, sukun on the ba, yep. Okay. Zakla. I mean, we, yeah. Let me, okay. Oh, there it goes. And I think we'll stop there. If you guys can do um, the page 20, 21, 22. So you gave us before, yeah. Being yeah, 21 and 22 page. for homework. And the top of 23, right? Finishes it. Yeah, the top of 23. Yeah. Inshallah. Right. Yeah, that was nice. Barakallahu feekum. Any questions? I'm just curious, Sheikh. Just when looking online, when you look at the, as you know, there's so many different lessons on grammar and stuff. Um, I know this book, I mean, nobody starts with Arab, but I'm not saying change it. I'm just curious, like so many books and stuff that comes further down, um, you know, in the lessons. Is there any particular reasons? That's just the style like of the Medina. Well, does it make more what sense? Abdul Rahim Fat was trying to do was trying to incorporate the language in conversation with vocabulary. So the Nahu that is learned is learned through practical voca everyday vocabulary. Okay. That makes sense? Absolutely. If there's no questions, we'll end here inshallah and we'll um, yeah, and you see each other next week inshallah. Wait, I have a, I do I do have a question. Yeah. Uh, where where I'm just coming in today, and I just need to know where are these papers uh, for the homework that you are signed. So, where what? I'm sorry. Where can I find this paper for the homework that you assigned? You said the pages. Oh, um, are you part of the WhatsApp group? Yes. Okay. So, um, Akil, can you send send it again on the WhatsApp group? Yeah. What's your name, sister? Akina. Okay, and, and your number, phone number, if you can just text me, I can send you the link. Oh, I'm inside the group. 
send it on the group, I think. It's on, it's on there if you... Yeah, just send it again on the group because if you oh, came in late, you won't see it. Yeah, right yeah, I came in late, so I'm not going to see all the other texts since oh, the day okay. that I came in. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Just send, send it again, Atif. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.